my friends, to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Finding Calm in the Chaos. And it is truly chaos in my house this week. I am Denise Sith. And holy crapola. Okay, so first off, uh, bonus next three months. I have decided to do no sponsors on the podcast. Let me tell you why. I loved the sponsors that I had. But the ones that want to come at me with the big bucks are products that I would not use. So I became um, basically disenchanted <laughs> and decided, you know what, uh, screw it. And now I can say, fuck it, uh, because <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not doing this podcast right now for monetary reasons. I do get some monetary stuff from it, you know, based on sponsorship and stuff like that. But uh, I do it for my own sanity quite frankly, and because I enjoy talking to you guys. Um, So with that said, um, I am going to talk about today, basically how I got a quick hot minute. I'm actually recording in my studio today um, because uh, the parentals ran out to a doctor appointment. And I was like, you know what? Peter's not feeling well today. He's taking a nap. I'm going to hurry up and record a a podcast. And I was like, holy crap, I'm in front of a microphone. Yay, I'm not sitting in a closet. Although Mr. Sith says the sound is way better in the closet. So that's interesting. So sorry, not sorry, Mr. Sith. I wanted to sit in a chair and not a folding chair. And um, I wanted my desk and not a step stool as my desk. Um, Okay, so what is going on? It is October. I have a birthday coming up. I think in two weeks. Yeah, 24th is my birthday. Beep, 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 beep. I'm going to be 54. And I will tell you something. I've kind of, it's kind of weird. I've I've never been more optimistic about the future, like my life, my current life and the future. And let me tell you why. So I'm kind of, my theme today is just going to be basically persistence, positivity. However, I'm real funny about the positivity thing because I used to be all like fall down that rabbit hole where like you have to be positive. It's a mindset. If you're not positive, you're just not changing your mind. You're not strong enough. But what those people don't factor in is like fucking life. They don't factor in death. They don't factor in problems, mental health, children, husbands, parentals, in-laws, jobs, okay? You can't be on all the time. And this is a major problem, I think, with just people in general. Social media, how you're only like depending on your likes. You must post every day. That's like my, literally, I'm trying to get away from this. But if not, you're like totally screwed by the social media platforms uh, if you don't post every day. But I honestly am thinking like less and less that that is an issue for me. Like, I just don't care anymore. I don't care about filters. I don't care. I mean, do you realize I met somebody the other day that follows, uh, follows me and she is a local gal and I just love her to death, but I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, yeah, we had this conversation and I have been given permission to talk about it. So I just want you guys all to know, be like, don't be blasting her. That's so rude. Um, I know we talked about it because it was so alarming that I felt like a jerk and I shouldn't feel like a jerk because I'm the one that didn't do it. Right. Okay. So what we're talking about is filters. I met somebody that I follow. Um, I don't follow. She follows me. I think I follow her. I don't even know, but we, um, uh, met up and we met for the first time. And um, we sat in a room. Um, I came in, had no clue. She was like texting me being like, I'm here. Oh my God, it's so nice to see you. I'm over in the corner and I'm just like, where the fuck is she? I'm gonna be really honest with you. She had applied so many filters to her photos online. I had no idea what she looked like. Like it didn't even look like her which was totally not even needed because she's a beautiful woman. I was like, I'm sorry. I go, I didn't even recognize you. 
from social media. And I don't mean to be rude, but you know, everybody who knows me knows I'm the donut without sugar. Right now I'm a vegan donut without sugar. <laughs> Plant-based. Um, so I was like, please, I'm not a vegan. Um, so it was like, okay, not that there's anything wrong with, I got to keep doing this shit. Not that there's anything wrong with vegans. But like I said, vegans take a moral and ethical approach to eating meat and I don't. So there's that. Um, but we had a conversation about it. I made it humorous. We talked, we agreed. I'm like, you know what? This is something I really need to talk about. She just felt so uncomfortable with herself. And I'm like, don't, cause you're like totally fucking pretty and you have beautiful eyes and gorgeous hair and you don't need stupid filters. Neither do I. There's that. Boom. We lived life. Uh, let life live on us, right? I want to carry, I feel like we don't carry what life gave us confidently anymore. It's like a shame. And then I feel bad for like this younger generation, a couple younger generations who can't do anything unless everybody fucking agrees with them or they're like in a mental status breakdown. Okay, listen, whatever happened to, you know what? I really like purple and I'm going to wear fucking purple every day. And you know what? I'm going to dye my eyes purple and I'm going to dye my hair purple and I'm going to color my tongue purple. And I'm thinking I'm going to put purple caps on my teeth and and then you go outside and someone goes, wow, that's fucking weird. And you're just like, oh my God, they don't like me. You have to like me because I like purple. Are you anti-purple? No, I'm not. I just, you know, when you do that, you know, I like purple, but not that much fucking purple. You know what I'm saying? This is kind of where our life has gone right now. The world has is in this place. Um, so totally, I'm back to total like, Squirrel. It's weird. Um, it's how my mind thinks. But we we agreed that I could talk about this. So we're all good. And um, we we'll have another coffee date. We're good to go. Um, but we're like, yeah, I'm like, don't. She's like, it feels so good after our meeting. Like, you made me feel so confident. And I'm like, you know what? That makes me feel good. Um, which is kind of selfish. Because I just wanted you to know you should feel good the way you are. Because you're a great person. Don't need any of that shit. It's like social media and like Hollywood and all these fucking like computer shit has somehow convinced us that we need these things to be acceptable. We don't. We just need to be ourselves. But we also don't need everybody to approve of what we feel is acceptable for ourselves. And then we're there. We're, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, the plant-based thing is going cool. And this is my positivity on this. It's really hard to eat plant-based or do any kind of diet in the house with my parentals. Um, they're at a level of almost downright fucking rude in how they have junk food and garbage all over the fucking house. I've had multiple people be like, hey, it's your house. Get rid of that shit. You know what? I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. And you really just, I feel like it is a, it is a level of testing or of willpower and control and the passion for me to do this because I'm doing this not because I want to lose weight. A lot of people are like, you know, you shouldn't do plant-based if you want to lose weight. That's another thing. Everybody loses weight differently. I've done carnivore, paleo, uh, uh, Weston A. Price, Whole Foods, Whole Nutrition, uh, I've at Weight Watchers, uh, Jenny Craig, um, it, all of the mail orders. I've done shakes. I've done every fucking MLM out there. I've done, okay, it all works part-time but nothing addresses the problem for me. And the problem is inflammation. And so I will tell you guys, I don't want to put numbers out there because it is quite alarming even to me, okay? But in just 11, today's 12, right? Yeah, 12 days. <laughs> like what fucking day is it? Um, Something's like going off in my, what is that? What is that? Oh, somebody's doing their lawn or some shit. Sorry for that little pause. Anyway, uh, I'm like squirrel. Uh, I hope that doesn't come up on the microphone, but I'm doing this because of inflammation it has just completely gone out of control. I've, I weigh more than I ever have. So I had to figure out how to manage my stress. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going all in. I'm going in on this. And going all in on it takes sacrifices, okay? I want to, be, I am going to be 54. My son is eight. 
I want to be here as long as I can be. And I am watching my body just steadily decline because of my lackluster approach to nutrition. You know, I know that food is highly involved in anything. And I'm going to be piss a lot of people off right now, even over exercise. And okay, so hold your, but hold your britches. Exercise is wonderful. I'm not saying not exercise, but you know, a lot of people, I don't find any joy in exercising. I'm going to be honest to God with you. But there are people who can indeed have movement. I run around all day, okay? All day I run around. Then I got to come home, cook, clean, run around with Buster. I got an eight-year-old. We go to three different co-ops. It's just insane. My volunteer schedule. The I, I got like five things going on myself. Mr. Sith has like five things going on. We are busy. We're never sitting down. And I can't stand that because I don't want to be in the business of being busy. I want to be productively busy, not busy to be busy. Okay. There's, there's a difference there. I've talked about that in the past on another bo- broadcast. I think I called it the business of being busy. I'm not sure. Whatever. Uh, listen to the shit peeps. Um, and I have found that in all of the diets I've been on, I'm actually taking um, a reprieve from even supplementation right now. My body needs to cleanse, okay? And so I will incorporate that back in, okay? Uh, probably like a multi and some omegas. I don't know, right? It all depends on what I my body is feeling. Now they're mowing the grass for the love of sweet Jesus. Um, Sweet baby Jesus, why during the podcast when the parentals are gone? Um, so I don't really care. Um, so here we go. So I really looked at both sides and said, I need to hold myself accountable. And I can't just have a little milk. Um, I don't drink milk, but I like dairy um, in general, per se. So I love um, cheese. I love cheese. I love cheese so much. Um, There are literally two landscapers here now in front of my house. This is sweet. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what it sounds like after. Um, But I want to make sure that I am holding myself accountable for like my uh, lack of willpower, essentially. There's tons of stuff out there I'm finding, especially in today's day, of plant-based available. And so a lot of people uh, have, will then now get to me and be like, hey, did you know they have a fake this and they have a fake that? And I'm like, I don't want to eat fake. I want to eat plant-based. I'm still not doing processed. I don't want processed food. I want physical one, like it. where did it origin from? It came from a farm. That's the origin I want. You know what I'm saying? So it is very disciplined and the parentals don't make it fucking easy at all because they have like literally 10 i'm not joking there's always sweets just piled up around on the table by my fruit bowl so to get to my fruit bowl i have to climb a fucking mountain it's like the 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 great wall of sugar to get to fruits or vegetables in my bowl i'm like okay whatever it's willpower you know that's on me it's on me to do that And in the 12 days that I've been doing this, as of the day, obviously, recording this, I've lost 16 pounds of inflammation. And I I see it in my face because my face is always like this huge component of like, bam, there it is. But uh, my face shows everything on me. It's a lupus thing. You get a butterfly when you're in pain. You get breakouts when you've got other stuff going on. It's, It's just crazy. But it's good if you know that because you have an indication of what's going on. So my persistence in trying to find a lifestyle that will work for my whole family. Are we going to eat plant-based forever? Probably. But, because I'm feeling really good on it and it tastes amazing. Um, I feel like we're getting taste buds back. And I ate good, okay? But we ate too much meat, period. I don't care... Uh, that I bought my meat, like sourced. Um, it's a family farm. Uh, it's my family's farm, and um, it's organic. It's grass fed. It's it goes from their farm to the slaughterhouse. It gets processed how I want it, and I pick it up. So there is no middleman. 
right? It's just beef, right? And hog. We do hog as well. So I have a freezer full of meat and hog and all that, but um, we used to take out steaks and eat like three steaks at a time, and it's too much. It's too much. We need to just eat it in a proportion of that we get to treat or taste the meat. You know, if we want bacon, am I going to cook a pound of bacon and eat it? Nope. We're not doing that every Sunday morning. But if we all decide that we want a treat and we really need some bacon, then, you know, I think a serving of bacon is like three slices, three slices a piece. We do whatever we're going to do after that um, in moderation. And this way, I, we don't feel like we're missing out on anything. Um, and at the same time, we can do stuff. You know what I mean? Like we would go to a fair and and try to find like, everyone's always like, what are you going to do at the state fair? Because we love the state fairs. And I was like, well, I think we would just do it in like more moderation. But we would still go to the fair. It probably wouldn't even taste good. Because I can tell you things taste way different already when I'm tasting stuff. It's it's insane. So it's the persistence of things. I'm also kind of losing um, I'm trying to get a grip on when I'm so busy like this, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way. So if you feel this way, like comment on this podcast, do something, okay? But, or reach out to me. Um, I feel like sometimes we extend ourselves as caregivers so much that not only do we lose, it's like, I just want somebody to say, damn, you're like super busy. I appreciate it. And so, um, I had a complete fucking blowout like two weeks ago. Maybe it was a week ago. I don't even remember, but I had a big ass blowout. I lost it on everybody in the fucking house. And Mr. Sith has really stepped up to the plate. But one of the things that we did, I go, and that's another thing, being persistent in trying to work on our communication still skills as a husband and wife has been we've really never worked on this better than we have since the parentals have been here because you know you got to stay in united people okay because my parents as much as they fight and do all sorts of weird shit and they're dysfunctional they have been married for going on 55 years this december and so i don't even know how to fuck that happened but if I can have a good marriage and make it even last half that, shit, we're good to go, Mr. Sith and I. So we are working on just trying to spend more time with us. We're working on that. Mr. Sith is not a big romancer. Uh, he's not a big talker. So you can see where the difficulty lies here because I'm just the opposite. I want to be wined and dined and he's not a whiner and diner. And I want, you know, to talk and he's not a talker. So we have to find how we can meet in the middle because I can't demand he becomes me and he can't demand that I become him because that's not a marriage, right? You have to compromise. And so we have been extremely persistent in trying to work on our relationship skills and communication skills to make this even tighter, right? I want to, I want like a tight relationship. I want to know that when hard times hit, because these aren't hard times, this is little shit. This is life. I want to know that when hard times hit, God forbid they do in the future, that we're going to get through that without a problem because we've already talked about this and we've solidified everything. And that's what marriage is. That persistence is also coming through into that for me. And one of the things that we enabled, because we're taking advantage of it while the parentals are here, it's like, fuck it, uh, is we've been doing Friday night date nights. We've been doing it two nights in a row. The first night, the first time was uh, every Friday night is we've been doing it. I meant two weeks in a row, not two days in a row. Um, but we, or, 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 um, we literally, the first time it was a shit show because we didn't make reservations because I don't know what everybody says about the economy and but people are not staying the fuck home in my area I can tell you that um I know I'm in a, a decently affluent area uh, affluent area so no one's staying home okay so we were we kind of like wound up someplace that was fine. It was good, but it wasn't our first choice or second or third. <laughs> Just It was number four. Um, so the last week we made, I made reservations. When I say we, I mean me. Um, so I made reservations. We got into the place we wanted to go the prior week. 
So now I'm looking for another place for tomorrow because we're going to go. This is obviously being recorded on the 12th, which is a Thursday, and we'll probably drop it tonight too. I really don't care anymore. It's like, sorry, I'll try to do next Wednesdays on Wednesdays. Um, but yeah, this is, it's just important to me that we just stay on this. And so persistence in our health, persistence in leading a healthy lifestyle, Pers persistence in our relationship and communication skills, persistence in me just coping. Okay. And this is a mom thing. Like, uh, I mean, it could be a dad thing if you're the, you know, mom, dad in your house. I don't even know. Whatever. Okay. I do like 90% of the household shit and everything pertaining to Peter. Mr. Sit's supposed to put him to bed. That's a thing that we've had. But, and they do scouts together. But let me tell you, like, I don't, I'm sorry. And I do so much that if you think I'm taking my car in for an oil change, you are like, I don't know, on one string of silly is what I'm saying. So I've been telling him for a month. I'm like, okay, I need an oil change. Okay, I need an oil change. Well, what's it at? 42%. Did your car tell you you needed an oil change? What the fuck does that mean? My car does not speak. Well, no, like, did you get a message? No, I didn't get a fucking message from my car. Like, what are you talking about? So he has like an app. And so I guess my car, you know, computer tells him when I need shit. I didn't get a notification from your car that you need an oil change. And here's me. Uh, this is way over my fucking head. I'm at 42%. I like to be over 50. Get me a fucking oil change. It's like gas. I got a, if I got less than a half, a half a tank of gas and you're in my car, fill it the fuck up. Okay. I just don't do that. I don't care about it. You're mixing blends and I go to the same fucking gas station and don't get gas after 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm, <laughs> that's like my one gas rule. I only want gas before 10 o'clock in the morning at my one station. If it's after that, we're not either number one, we're not going anywhere because I don't have enough gas or we got to wait till next morning <laughs> and, and hope, you know, kiss it to God that we don't run out of gas. But these are the things that I'm persistently trying to work on. I have to stop because if someone else does it, all the things that I'm overwhelmed with, this is how I'm looking at it. Am I going to be pissed off because they didn't do it like I do, do it? Honest answer, yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna be That meme or that little like gif that goes around that says, you know, one of my toxic traits is, you know, bitching that nobody cleans my house and then bitching at everybody cleaning the house because they're not doing it the way I do it. Boom. That literally is me with everything, with everything. Like, and then there's also a tax, there's a toxic trait meme that says, um, there's always two people in a marriage. One person that knows how to load a dishwasher and another one who loads it like a crackhead um also same because people will load the dishwasher and i'll just fucking redo it all before i do it yep nope i'm like this is wrong this is wrong nope yep nope yeah and i'll just rearrange it all so like it's me it's like there are places for shit in the dishwasher just put them there hello like how the fuck are they supposed to get clean if you don't put them where they're supposed to be i mean duh so I am persistently trying to remind myself that I put myself in those situations. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that, you know, Mr. Sith didn't do this or that or this. It's because when he does it, I lose my shit that he's not doing it the way I do it. So like, I got to come up with like, you know, either I deal with that or I need to shut the hell up. I mean, really, I, I literally just called myself out like, woo, to the podcast world all over the world. There you go. Um, I can be an asshole. Uh, we can all be assholes when we need to. But sometimes we need to be an asshole, but sometimes we don't. So, and I do know that when I do do that, he does something. It's not the way I did it. I get upset. I know that that deters him from doing it again, obviously, because he doesn't want to hear me bitch. So I get that. Totally get that. And I'm persistently trying to stay on my ass about if I'm letting go, you're letting the fuck go, Denise. But if you're not letting go, shut the fuck up, Denise. Okay? You know, sometimes I got to do that. I'm I'm learning. Life 
It's just a learning event. And I'm telling you, this is a, my life right now is a perfect example of how I, the whole, the, those of you who are just tuning in, um, know that, uh, don't know, but those of you who know me know that I do not like when people tell me that they're doing their best. No, you ain't. You are not Jesus. Okay. You are not God. You are not like all holy. You are not like some freaking Greek God, whatever you want to believe in. You ain't that person. You're here on this earth and our entire existence is to tr to take every day and do something even better than we did yesterday. Are we going to achieve that every day? Nope. Some days are going to be big ass underdogs. Some weeks are going to be underdogs. Some months are going to be underdogs. But as long as you go into life and every day knowing that you're never doing your best, you can always do something better. You just have to do something and strive to do that. And that's what makes life challenging and interesting and busy and fulfilling. Not, nah, I did my best. Okay, but did you really? You're so fucking great at this that that was your best? Mm, I don't question if that's your best. Because that's not even my least. You know, <laughs> just joking. Joking. Um, that's the OCD talking. Anyway, so that's part of the deal. I want everybody to know that you could stick with things. And I'm really finding this culmination of all this persistence that I've been going through the last couple months is really starting to pay off. I'm really coming into my own. I'm really starting to understand that life is just all about trials. It's trials and errors. And you can make more of it if you just make sure that you just keep on plugging, that you stay persistent in trying to achieve and find. If something doesn't work, work, look for something else. If this isn't working for you, jump over to something else. And for me, it's been a lot of toggling, <laughs> a lot of toggling, but that's okay. I, you know, why me? Why me? Stop that victim shit. You're worth so much more than that. I'm worth so much more than that. Don't fall into victim mode. Please don't. Because there's always something. And there's always somebody who has it worse. Always, always, always. Even in the shittiest positions. I've been in some pretty ass shitty positions. And there were people in shittier positions at that time than me. It just happens. that Such is life. Okay. But I really feel like positive about this. Is it hard? Yes. I've been really struggling. I I'm I'm I was going to say I think I overextended myself on the homeschool co-ops this year, but I will correct that statement in that I have definitely <laughs> over overwhelmed and uh overdid it a little bit in my schedule this year um for Peter. We underdid last year, so of course naturally I would overdo this year. So hopefully next year we'll find the happy medium. But Co-op on Tuesday, uh, actually, well, it's not a co-op. It's a private tutoring situation on Tuesday. I actually love that opportunity because it's early in the morning. We get out, we're able to do stuff and get some schooling done here and then go out and enjoy our fall stuff. Wednesday, that's an all-day thing. Um, well, it starts at, so we're going from 9 until, uh, what is it, 2 o'clock, which I'm teaching three classes throughout the day. So I'm teaching a nine o'clock class, an eleven class, and a twelve thirty class. And at I was that it's rough on me because Tuesday I have to do all my shopping for the groceries for the cooking classes. And it's really a lot because you don't know who's gonna call in, you don't know whatever. Food is super high. Now my tuition so far has covered all of my food, so there is no issues with that thus far. But wow, it's it's a lot, right? So then I leave there and I'm exhausted on Wednesday. And then Thursdays, we have another co-op, but this one's split, right? So I have a morning class and I have an afternoon class, which is great. It's up sometimes in the morning, you're, like, you're done, right? Afternoon. And then you're like, shit, I got another class in like 40 minutes. And so that makes it a little bit hard. And then Fridays, we're doing stuff, fall stuff, or, and then we have date night. Saturday and Sundays is always family day. We're either doing something, having somebody at the house, or going out and enjoying the fall festivities here in the Midwest. But still, it is a lot. And at the same time, I'm maintaining this new 
you know, lifestyle. I'm, you know, I'm detoxing. I'm doing all this stuff at the same time. I am sleeping better uh, little by little by little. Uh, a lot of that has been corrected because I'm I'm getting rid of the phone a lot earlier now. Um, guys, get rid of your phones in the bedroom. It changes everything. Um, what else? That's pretty much it. And keep reaching out to people. The other day I reached out and one day I made 17 phone calls um, to 17 different women and none of them answered. <laughs> Not a fucking one. <laughs> I don't know what happened with that. I did find someone to um, speak to. I was having a mom moment and I needed to speak to somebody. Um, and uh, it was my therapist. So there is that. <laughs> find yourself a good therapist. And that's how we're going to end today's podcast. Mm. If you don't already have a therapist, find one. If not, find a really good friend who will actually pick up the phone and use them as the therapist. There's that. All right. I love you guys all. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'm going to try to do a coffee talk. I think I can do it without a problem for Saturday. And until then, remember, go out there and lead with kindness.